Thank you very much. Today, uh, I want us to look at scripture. Uh, I greet everyone under my voice in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, I thank God for your life and my life that we are still alive in the year 2024. What is it which you have done which guarantees that you should be alive? What is it which you say? I did this compared to so and so who died in 2023. What is it which you have done? Nothing. Nothing. So, what is it which has caused you to be alive? It is the grace of God. So, today I want us to look at the word of God. I want to highlight three things about the word of God. Why is it that? people reject God? Why is it that people don't want to get saved? Is it that there were people who were created by God that this one, the wife is going to hell. The husband is going to hell. It's like a lot or lottery. But I take the husband, I leave the wife. Is that so? So now, I want to show you the reasons why People do not want to get saved. Why people don't obey the word of God? So now I'm just going to do it in simple three stages. And these stages, they involve clear, direct verses. You see, one law of Bible interpretation is that you must base what you believe on a clear statement from the Bible. I don't know if I'm clear. If you believe that someone must not fornicate, where is it written? If you believe that you must be baptized, where is it written? Mm -hmm. If you believe that God wants to save few people, where is it written? Mm -hmm. Is there a direct statement that says, only few will be saved? Mm -hmm. Why? Everything we believe on must be direct. So 2 Peter chapter 3, the letter of 2 Peter, Somebody has to read for me very clear and audibly so that we understand. Second Peter chapter 3. Don't worry about sister. Sister is going through a phase which I went through. So I went through that. I don't know if there is someone who didn't go through there. They say we passed through there. So she's just doing what all of us did. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 3. I said I'm going to explain why people don't want to be saved. It's not because God created certain people for hell. People make decisions for themselves. And why? Why do people don't want to be saved? Second Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Let's read. Someone read for me. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Yes. Beloved, I now write to you the second episode in both of which I stay up your pure minds okay. by way of reminder. So, Peter is saying, I am now reminding you in this second letter. So, there was a first letter, mm -hmm. but now he is reminding the people in Second Peter chapter 3, this one, of the things he wrote in the first letter. That is First Peter chapter 1, mm -hmm. chapter 2, chapter 3, mm -hmm. to the end of First Peter chapter, whatever it is. So, now he says, now my second letter, I am reminding you of the things which you must know. In the first episode. In the first letter. So there were two letters. Mm -hmm. Now, in order for us to work, to be genuine, to be serious, and to be stable in the things of God, we must remember what we know. Mm -hmm. Do you know it? So now Peter says, the things I'm reminding you, I'm just reminding you because already you must be knowing them. Now, there's two. That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets mm -hmm. and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their last... Okay, and... let's take that this thing on. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days. Walking according to their own life. What is a scoffer? 
Jiro Sanazi, uh, it's very good for us to even to use Google. Let us you, try to understand the meaning of the word scoffer so that we know exactly what we are what, what we are talking about. Peter says, scoffers are going to what? Walking after their own what? Lusts. Mm -hmm. So a scoffer walks according to their own lusts. So what is a scoffer? According to Google, it says someone who laughs and speaks about a person or idea in a way that shows that they think that the person or the idea is stupid. Oh, or very clear. So a scoffer is someone who laughs at someone based on their idea. Mm -hmm. How many times do you go out preaching and people are ha, 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 ha. You think there is God? That is a what? Scoffer. A scoffer. Somebody who is laughing at your idea of preaching. And they will come scoffing. But it is not about the scoffing. What is the, the, the spirit behind the scoffing? When they are scoffing, it's not that they hate God. They are trying to what? Justify their what? Their actions. Where, where, do you know that there is no one, especially in the Bible, if you go and preach, there is something which they are, there is an evil which they are doing, which they are covering through that what? Very good, verse 2, okay, so that we are, you understand what I'm saying. That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us the apostles of the Lord and Savior, yes, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lives. So, when a scoffer approaches you, it's not about the scoffing, it's what they are carrying behind. They are on what? Last. So, when somebody is scoffing, it's not about scoffing, but they are sinning. So, it is that sin which causes them to be what? To be a scoffer. To be a scoffer. So now, Peter says in this one, I've told you, or I am reminding you, that in the last days, scoffers are going to come, and they are going to be, what? Scoffing because of their last, divers' last. Mm -hmm. And then verse 4. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were. From so, the beginning of creation. So a scoffer will say, You are preaching about God. Are you serious? We heard from our grandfathers and their fathers and their great grandfathers that Jesus is coming. Where is he? Why are they saying that? The reason why they are saying that is because they are living in sin. Their conscience is feeling guilty, is in a, in a guilty conscience. Because we are living in sin. Mm -hmm. So scoffers are people who justify themselves because of sin. Mm -hmm. Read this one again, join them, baby. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Mm -hmm. For this they willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water okay. I... okay. what causes the scoffers to scoff the will there's a verse we spoke about the will willfully forget so you can live in sin willfully mm -hmm. and because of that you become a what when you hear the gospel go on the on, on, on the high street and preach the first people who attack man is being why? They know that they are what? Their life. Their is what? Is dead. Mm -hmm. They go on the high street and they preach. See the first people who are going to, to attack you. You are to run a cigarette. You are to run a drug. Those are the people who are going to what? Attack. attack you. They will be scoffing. They will be laughing. That, that, we, we have that the, the, the definition of a scoffer is somebody who mocks at someone's what? I <laughs> you see, there is God. What are they covering? Their lifestyle. Their lifestyle. So a scoffer is someone who does things to cover up for their sin. Mm -hmm. And then because of that, how do they reject God willingly? Mm -hmm. 
So now, there is no such a thing as someone was created by God to go to work. No. You are going to go to hell willingly because you are scoffing at the truth. Verse number one. So now we have seen that a scoffer justifies their lifestyle. And as they justify their lifestyle, they do it because they mock those who are carrying the truth. Verse five. For this they will fully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished by being flooded with water. Hold it. Here is a scoffer willfully ignoring God. And then the Bible says they forget the days of who? Of old. Of Noah. What were the people in the Noah's time doing? The Bible says they were sinning. They were what? Scoffing. Scoffing. Taking alcohol. Getting married. Lesbianism. Violence. Doing all the things which we are seeing today. The Bible says there is nothing what? New under the sun. So whatever happened before in the days of Noah, we are seeing it today. But the only thing today is that it is multiplied. So now, Peter says, Scoffers, you are justifying your lifestyle. The reason why you are justifying your lifestyle is the reason why you willfully reject God. Is it clear? So that is verse number one. First Peter chapter 3 from verse 1 to 7. People go to hell willingly and they make a decision. As the people in the days of Noah were told by Noah to repent. What were they doing in Noah's time? They were laughing. They were mocking. They were scorning. They were scoffing. Until the Bible says Noah entered into the what? And then they perished. Who killed, who destroyed them? Was it God? No. Was it because God said, I'm going to No. Willing, willingly, mm -hmm. they disobeyed the word of God. Mm -hmm. So a scoffer is someone who is going to die and go to hell because of their own choice. Mm -hmm. So I want to see Let's look, this is this verse, we can just put it in the equation, but I did not plan for it. Matthew chapter 22, verse 1. Matthew 22, verse 1. As the kingdom of God is like something, 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 and then something comes on. Matthew 22, verse 1. So when you die and you go to hell, it's not because God created for you for hell. It's you made a solid decision not to obey. Matthew 22, verse 1. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son, mm -hmm. and went out and, and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. Who was invited? Okay, let's try to take it verse by verse. Very nice verse one, Mungo Mira, Mako Pesa verse one, Mungo Mira, we bisect verse one. And and, and Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. The kingdom of God is like a certain king, king who arranged a what? A marriage. Who is the king? God. Who is the son? Jesus. So now, verse 2, what happened? And sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. So listen, the servants were not called to go and invite people. Are we together? Mm -hmm. They were sent to go and call the people who were already what? Invited. So when the servants were going out, they were not carrying invitation letters. Mm -hmm. They were just carrying reminders that the wedding feast is now what? Mm -hmm. This is a picture of the Israelites, God's people. Jesus, God said, I'm going to send you my son. But the Bible says in John 1 verse 12, they what? They rejected him. So what did these guys do? When they were told the feast is ready, what did they do? Verse 3, continue. Verse 3. And they were not willing to come. They were not willing 
to come. So the kingdom of God involves your will. And once the kingdom of God is compared to a what? A king who made a wedding. And then he invited guests to come his wedding. And then the invited guests were not willing to come. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Come, let us what? If you are because you are just doing the same thing. Will. It's Isaiah 180. The kingdom of God is compared to a man, a king who made a feast. And then what happened? He invited the people. They were not willing. Did God, does God force people to come to a wedding? No. Who has ever been forced to go to a wedding? No one. Chato. Come if you want. Or you don't want, we are going to arrest you. Come to the wedding. No, you come willingly. Isaiah 1 18. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Hold it. So do you see that when God deals with our sins, there is reasoning He does with us? Mm -hmm. Does He force? No. Let us what? Together. Though your sins be as what as what they will be what that it. Why God is saying, when I want to deal with your sin, I negotiate with you. I what is the reasoning? Mm -hmm. What is the reason? What do you say? I reason to what you do you do you say? Do you say? Do you to Do you say? Do you say? Do you say? Do you say? Do you and not because of the air, the shower, and you don't even go there. Why? It's something you do cordially. Something which does not involve force. So now God says, Come, let us listen. If you read the verse 19, though they are like red, they are red like crimson, mm -hmm. they shall be as wool. Mm -hmm. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good. Willing food. and what? So your will is what? Involved. Mm -hmm. We saw 2 Peter chapter 2 or chapter 3 verse 7 where the Bible speaks about they willingly are ignorant. That is, why is one to GT some Mukura Bamari, but she's Ziva, as much as we can be. As they know it. That's why they are mocking. The mocking is a cover up trying to, 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 to make your conscience feel easy. Do you know that when you, you have not done something and someone has done it, you try to mock the person who has done it? Mm -hmm. Who do you think you are? At work, somebody is doing the right thing and you are not doing it. You feel jealous, and it? Mm -hmm. So mockers are people who are feeling jealous for those who are saved. Mm -hmm. Why? They are feeling jealousy because they are going to hell willingly mm -hmm. because of their works. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. So we saw in John, and we saw in where, where we read in Isaiah, the will is involved. We saw in Matthew 22 that you don't go to a wedding by force. Mm -hmm. And then we saw that they refused to go. Why? Salvation is not forced. Mm -hmm. So when you look at Matthew 22 where we did read, you will see that anyone who wants. Mm -hmm. And those who want, some of them, even those who were on the byways and highways, some refused. Mm -hmm. But those who went, they were received. Mm -hmm. And even to someone who went there, Waiting, come, and he was kicked out of the palace. Mm -hmm. You can backslide. What they say, I'm saved, but you are not wearing what the waiting gown. What is the waiting gown? Holiness. Put on the wall armor of God. Mm -hmm. So you can be saved, but if you are living in sin, you will be ejected. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse ten. Why? Are people not saved? Is it because of God? It's okay. It's okay. Verse 10. Yeah. And with all unrighteousness. Okay, it's something from verse 9. Verse 9. Yeah. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan mm -hmm. with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Because they did not receive the love for the truth that they might be saved. People who are going to perish 
Are they going to perish because God created them for hell? Why are they going to perish? The answer is this. Read it for us. Just 9 and 10. You read it very well. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs and lying wonders, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love for the So truth. do you see that people are going to perish? They are associ associated. They are related to signs, miracles, and what? Wonders. What did Jesus say about miracles and wonders? He said a wicked an adulterous generation six after what? So now signs and wonders in the Bible, they are related or they are associated with unbelief. Mm -hmm. uh, the, do you know that the greatest miracle in our lives is not a healing. Mm -hmm. The greatest miracle is your soul. Mm -hmm. If you understand that one day you are going to be six feet deep and you are going to be quiet in that box, and you are saved. That is the greatest miracle a human being will want. In your program, a miracle, and you know that. Besides, Google that is you can do it. I don't care because I was not as you not know, did. Yesterday, I saw a preacher who went to the graveyard, and then the cameras were pointing at the graves. He was saying, Here lies doctors, engineers, teachers. Uh, business people, white people, black people. This is where we all end. And you know, I was showing what? You are showing the, 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 the graves. This is where we all end. You say, do you know who I am? Yes, I know who you are. You will end here. Mm -hmm. I am an answer. Yes, you are an answer, but you are going to end here. Mm -hmm. Why? We are living in a world which does not know that we are going to die. Mm -hmm. So the greatest miracle is the what? The miracle of your soul. Mm -hmm. Now we read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10, lying, the one who is coming, he is coming with signs. So already, when you see a preacher coming with signs and miracles and wonders, you must be suspicious. Mm -hmm. Because their father, the Antichrist, is going to be doing the same. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusions that they should believe the lie. Is God going to send them strong delusions because he doesn't want to send them? No. Why is he going to send them delusions? They rejected, they rejected the truth. So there are people who will tell you that ah, if you are not going to be saved, it's because God created you for hell. Is there a direct verse which says people were created for hell? No. Matthew 25, verse 41, it says hell was created for whom? For the devil and his angels. Mm -hmm. Nowhere do we see human beings entering there. Mm -hmm. So hell was not created for who? For so how can you say there were people who were created for hell when the Bible says God is not happy with the death of a what? Mm -hmm. Which God are you delivering? Mm -hmm. One, he is not supported by scripture. Two, he is supported by what people think. So now when I say to you, the people who are not going to be saved is because they don't love the truth. Will you argue with me? Mm -hmm. If I say to you, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, the people who are not going to be saved willingly, they mock God. Mm -hmm. will, you, will you reject it? No. So now we see now, we read verse 12. That they may believe, that they may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So, do you see their problem? It's not God. Mm -hmm. Pleasure in what? Unrighteousness. We saw in, 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 in the second Peter that they are not going to be saved because of their works. Mm -hmm. so they reject God because they mock Him because there are things which they are doing. Mm -hmm. Now, here we see that the reason why they are going to perish, they did not love the truth. What else? Verse 13. But we are bound, we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God, the beginning, from the beginning, chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit. God, God chose you through sanctification. What is sanctification? When God chooses you, 
There is something which is called sanctification. What is sanctification? Uh, for us to understand sanctification, let us go to First John chapter 3, verse 3. What is sanctification? I'm just touching verses which I have not planned to use, but I see they are relevant in what we are saying. First John chapter 3, verse 3. Okay, start from verse 2 and verse 3. Beloved, now we are children of God, mm -hmm. and it is not yet been revealed what we shall be, mm -hmm. but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. So do you say that there is something which is called self-what? Purification. Kuzidi. Sanctification. How can this be done? Now why? You see, we said the kingdom of God is like a wedding. A wedding is somewhere where you go voluntarily. If I have been invited for a wedding, I have bathed nicely, combed my hair, food suit, and a tie, and I'm clean. And then as I go there, I pass through a river, and then I go into the water, and I'm dead. Will I get to the wedding nicely? But when I leave the house, I say, I was what? So I must maintain my what? So John is saying, if you have this hope in Christ, you what? You purify yourself. Who knows That is sanctification. Mm -hmm. So is it God who says, I don't want you to go to heaven because you are not bathing yourself? No. It's what? It's yourself. yourself. So purification or sanctification or cleansing, self-cleansing is something that you know it is mm -hmm. This is the thing which many people don't want to face. Do we say we are Christians and we go around sinning? Do we say we are Christians and we go around committing fornication? Do we say we are Christians and go around stealing? Do we say, you know, and we say, I, as long as you say, Jesus, come into my life. It is, inyasha, inyasha. It's by grace. What is grace? Titus 2, verse 11. The grace of God is what? Is it be revealed to all. Teaching us to what? Kuramba, zwaka ipa. Zwaka ipa, zwaka ipa. But we are living in a world where the gospel of, of grace is great. What is grace? Grace is learning how to reject fornication. That's grace. So this grace of saying, ah, oh, we are under grace, but you are living in sin. That's not true grace. Romans 6.14, it explains what true grace is. If I got the right, the right verse, Romans 6.14. I'm not just picking verses which I never planned on. The ones I have, I hear. Romans 6, how many minutes? Okay. Yeah. Romans 6 14. 14. Mm. For sin shall not have dominion over you, mm -hmm. for you are not under the law, but under grace. So, do you see mm -hmm. that when you are sinning, you are under the what? The law. The law. So, there are people right now who must be keeping the Sabbath according to their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Because they are what? They are living in sin. Mm -hmm. I may not even this. So why, what am I trying to put? I am trying to put an issue where we say we mustn't sin willfully. Mm -hmm. We are not under the grace of God when we are sinning. Mm -hmm. First Peter four ten, you know, to you, the manifold grace of God has been revealed. Eh? Mm -hmm. What is the meaning of the word manifold? Mm -hmm. There is grace in getting married. There is grace in getting a job. Mm -hmm. There is grace in being protected on the roads driving. Mm -hmm. There is grace in, in being a good person. Mm -hmm. There is grace in being forgiven your sins. I mean, mm -hmm. So grace is manifold. Me, what is the meaning of the word manifold? Divers. Mm -hmm. When we say the rainbow is of divers, of manifold what? colors, we are saying there is yellow, there is green, there is red, there is orange, there is white, there is purple. There is every color you can want. If you find it in the rainbow. Why? The rainbow is of manifold colors. So grace is of manifold colors. Every aspect of life is covered in grace. Forgiveness of sin. Getting a job. Living a good life, mm -hmm. 
you can find that under the term grace. So grace is not one thing. When you say, ah, no, the first bit of it, Pejash, can you even see? What type of grace are you talking about? So grace is not one dimensional, many faceted. Then the other issue I want to show you why people don't get saved. We said in the first in second Peter chapter 3 and 7, people don't get saved because they are scoffers, eh? Mm -hmm. And then the other thing, second Tim, second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 says, people don't get saved because they don't love the truth, the truth to be saved. Mm -hmm. Then the last verse I want us to look at is John chapter 3, verse 15. This one leads us to John chapter 3, 16. For God so loved thee. But we start from verse 15. John chapter 3, from 15. Yes. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, mm -hmm. that whosoever believes in him should not perish, mm -hmm. but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. So right. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, mm -hmm. but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, mm -hmm. but he, that, he who does not believe is condemned already, mm -hmm. because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Verse 19. And in this the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light. So do you hear that men loved what? Darkness. Rather than light. Causing them not to what? To be saved. So is it God's fault? No. At this most time. No. So when you say people are not saved because they were created for hell, you are not telling the truth. You are lying. The reason men are going to go to hell is because of a choice. Mm -hmm. The will. The will. Mm -hmm. The will. Read verse 19 again. And this is the condemnation that the light is coming to the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone, for everyone practicing evil hates light. And does not come to the light. So, do you see that going to the light or it's, it's called coming to the what? To the light. People are not coming to Christ, not because Christ does not want them. But their, their works are what? Evil. So, they don't want to see. You see, when you are living in sin and you come on life, people say, ah, what's wrong with this man? Why? Your works are what? Evil. Because you've come to the light. So, this is the reason why John says, people don't want to come to God because of their what? Is it because of God? No. This is a simple gospel. Mm -hmm. So no one is going to die and go to hell because God created them for hell. Mm -hmm. You are going to go to hell because of your own choice. Bible says, today, if you hear his voice, do not what? Is it God who opens your heart? No. Is you who opens your heart? Who's who says more? And then now, I've shown you the three things which were a, like a highlight of my sermon. So today, I just want to show you now some verses which go with what we were talking about. Hebrews 2, verse 9. We are just now reading verses to support our, what, our topic. The verses we are reading, they just support the same concept we are talking about. But in this way now, they are showing who Jesus came for. He came for everyone, but not everyone is going to be what? Why? Because of a choice. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 2 9. Hebrews 2 9. Uh -huh. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. And he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Who did Jesus die for? Everyone. This is a direct, yeah. which is now hidden, what? Mm -hmm. Can you give me a verse which opposes that verse, which you can win my case when I present it? I present to you Hebrews 2 verse 9. I just said, Jesus tested death for every man. Hebrews 2 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Which verse can you bring in Opix and Is there such a verse? Do you know what they say? 
Jeremiah 18. <laughs> Jeremiah 18 says, uh, the poor child is going to arrive to what? To do what they want with their what? With the clay. With the clay. So is he talking about someone going to hell? No. So if I say, I've got a, a, a clay here and I want to make a pot, and then it is spoiled. Are we saying that this is saying somebody is going to go to hell because God created them for hell? No. Why? In the first place, who has ever seen a potter whose business and duty is to wake up and make vessels to destroy? Mm -hmm. My great mother, she was a potter. She used to make different types of pots, big ones and small ones, and, you know, different variety. Never ever in her lifetime did she say, Zuku, today we are going to create what? Pots to destroy. Every pot she was making was for business because she was selling those things. So God in Jeremiah 18, verse 1, 2, 3, 4, when he says the vessel was mad in his head, what was he talking about? Do you know the answer? It's found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. We are talking about no one being created for hell. Self-purging. We saw in John 1, 3, 3, self what? self -education. But now this John Timothy puts it in a different way. So, 2 Timothy 2, 21. Or oh, is that from verse 19? No one was created for hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nevertheless, the solid foundations of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. Mary, who are God's? Verse 20. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So do you see that this verse is related to First John chapter 3, verse 3? We have got this hope. What does he do? But now here there is something which someone must do if you are to be named as the one who belongs to God. What must you do? Depart from iniquity. We'll continue reading. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, mm -hmm. some of honor and some for dishonor. So do you say that the vessels of dishonor are the ones which are going to be what? Destroyed. Why this comes? Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, pre prepared for every good work. So, how is someone going to be saved? You prepare, you, you what? You cleanse your, yourself. You purify yourself. yourself. KJB, not the, if you purify Yourself. Now, if you tell people that there's something she's called self purification, oh, so are you telling me that someone has to save themselves? Yes, by what purifying yourself? Not that Jesus, you died for yourself on the cross, Jesus died for you, yes, eh? mm -hmm. but there is something which is called self what purification because she gets this. Mm -hmm. There is something which is why when you have been invited for the wedding, it's not the king who's going to pick you out of the what. Your bedroom, you say, now come to the wedding. The car is downstairs. Mm -hmm. You go on your own to the wedding. Mm -hmm. And then when you get at the wedding door, you are given what? Wedding regalia. Mm -hmm. The suit. And then you go inside for the banquet. Mm -hmm. So the issue being self-purification. When I say self-purification, do you save yourself? I'm not saying you died for yourself or you save yourself. Mm -hmm. But there is something which you must what? You remember Paul when he was in jail? Mm -hmm. The jailer says, what must we what? Do. So there's a doing. You must what? Do. do to be saved. Mm -hmm. uh, John 1 verse 7. So now we saw in John 3 verse 15 that the people who rejected Christ, verse 16, 17, 18, they rejected him because of their works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. John 1 verse 7. John 1 verse 7. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that through him, that all through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. Mm -hmm. That was the true light which, which gives light to every man coming into the world. Does this light go to some men? No. To who? Every man. Do you know next time, brothers and sisters, there's a topic which is very 
sensitive and very, very, very dangerous, which misleads many people. Many people, when they hear about salvation in Christ and uh, someone being saved by grace, they have no clue of what the scripture is talking about. Here, the verse is saying, the true light which lights every man who what? comes into the world. Do you know that every man who comes into the world, I know light one man. There's a verse, I think, in Psalm 69, verse 27, where it says, everyone's name is written in the book. Do you know what this is? Mm-hmm. Or about people's names being what? Written. That when, when she is born in South Africa, she's in South Africa. Eh? Mm-hmm. The certificate of South Africa. Eh? So you think God doesn't have the certificate for everyone? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you are together. But no. when mm-hmm. you are born in by God, the day we are born, light, the certificate. This one was born in Syria. This one was born in Pakistan. So that's why you see that on Judgment Day, the Bible says books will be what? Not a book. My book, Ashadi. Good. What is wrong? I'm so cut. I'm so cut to cut us, cut to cut us, cut to cut us, cut you did this and that and that and that and that and that and you died on this day. So everything about you is written. Whether you got saved or not, including your life, that you were born in Zimbabwe. 19 dash dash. You re- somebody came preaching to you, you rejected. Why? There is a record of everything on earth. So now every person who is born in this world, the Bible says there is a light, the light which what? Light. Light them. So you know pay you light. But who knows what it just come into my life or not. Mm-hmm. So we saw the verse we read. What did he say? Read verse, verse 7 again about the light and about every man coming into this world. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. All through him must believe. Why should all believe? 1 Corinthians 1 verse 21. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 20. Just keep on there. 1 Corinthians 1. Why should all believe? Listen to the reason. We are just doing like this. I didn't know that the Bible is attached to every verse is attached to every verse. Let's go to this chapter 1, this one, 21. 21. Um. For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. Do you see? Who are going to be saved? Those who what? Who believe. Why don't people believe? The, 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 mm. the will. So every man on earth has the potential to be saved. Mm-hmm. Acts 17, verse 30. And then I will read it up. I will tell you on the paper. Acts 17, verse 30. 30. Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Commands all men everywhere. Is this not a direct statement? Mm-hmm. If I say all men, everywhere, what have I said? Everyone. Yeah. Have I said some men? Yeah. Have I said the elect? Yeah. For God so loved the elect yeah. that the elect eh? and then the Bible says love not the world and the things in the world are mm-hmm. And then love not the elect doesn't match. Why? Mm-hmm. God so loved the World. What is the world? Everyone. Everyone. Going into all the world. Mm-hmm. Jesus said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. Who was lost? Everyone. So are you saying the non elect are not lost? Mm-hmm. Are you only saying the elect were the ones who were lost? Mm-hmm. You know where the confusion comes? Mm-hmm. It comes in Revelation 13, verse 8, where the Bible says, We were saved from the what? It doesn't say from before the foundation. <laughs> you see, do you see the, 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 the terms? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go to Revelation 13, verse 8. I would think a, a, a King James Version it says it nicely. So, when I say I was saved from the foundation of the world, I've said something, I didn't. Mm-hmm. But if I say I was saved from before the foundation of the world, mm-hmm. I've said something. Different. What is the difference? Very good, yes. Revelation 13 verse 8. 
all who dwell on earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The book of life, uh, the, 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 the Lamb slain from the what? From the foundation. Of Does it from before? No. What is before? Before the creation. Is if I say before creation, I'm saying creation before that is. But if I say from before create from creation, I did. Mm -hmm. The creation. Oh no, it's the report. So when somebody says I was saved from the from before the foundation of the world, were you created? No. Mm -hmm. Who was there? Only God. Only God. That's why Ephesians says we were once darkness. Mm -hmm. So if we were saved before you were born, when were you darkness? Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. The problem is Vanuakawanda, they are tricked by Revelation 13 verse 8, mm -hmm. which says at the end of the day, we are saved from before the foundation. It doesn't say from before the foundation, it says from the foundation. When no Niki Job, I got put it on in Guayaki. John in the Guayaki. Is this in Guayaki? So that matches creation upwards, yes. not before creation. Yes. I don't know if I'm wrong. Last the other verse, and then we go to the last one. In uh, one Peter four verse ten. Capet. One Peter four. Yeah, verse ten. Verse ten. Yeah. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Mm -hmm. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracle of okay, God. Okay, I think I made a mistake. This one, Tatui covered it. Mm -hmm. The verse I wanted to cover is the verse which said, Jesus Christ is the Savior of all men. I think it's very maybe. Jesus Christ is the Savior of all men, especially those who are... Believe it. Yeah, let's look for it. Savior of all men, especially those who believe. I might tell you, not yet written it. Particularly, mm Agabatana. -hmm. Savior of all men. The text in Peter. Special. Special. I think it is special. Special those who believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see, we are having an issue of saying. Okay, through First Timothy four. Oh, First Timothy four verse. Four. Okay, I said Peter instead of Timothy. Yeah, sorry. First Timothy four. I didn't write it down. First Timothy four verse ten. Read the verse. It says Jesus Christ is the savior of all men, especially those who believe. So even those who don't believe, why don't they? Why don't They get saved once they start believing. So it's not that I don't want them to believe. Read the verse. Verse 10. Mm. For to this end we both labor and suffer reproach mm. because we trust in the living God mm. who is the savior of all men, especially those who believe. So God saves all men. Acts 1730, we saw that everywhere, men everywhere are commanded to what? Repent. So we are Done, brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. who is saved? Those who believe. Everyone. Did God create a, create people for him? No. No. So when a man comes to you and tells you that someone was created for him, someone was created for him, that is not what the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches that God saves those who believe. One Corinthians one verse twenty one. Anyone can believe, mm -hmm. but most likely most people don't believe the scriptures because of what is behind them. Mm -hmm. Willingly, mm -hmm. they reject God because of their works. John three, verse nineteen. Mm -hmm. They don't want to come to the light because their works can be. Revealed. Thank you very much. I have a question yeah. before you close. There are those who come with the, the prayer that Jesus made. Uh, in my Matthew, mm -hmm. when they say Jesus prayed for the elect. Yeah, okay, go to the verse. It's I know John 17. I don't know if you if you know if it's the same verse. Mm -hmm. 
27, mm -hmm. yes, that's the one where Jesus prays for the disciples. Mm -hmm. The what? Jesus the prays for, for the, the disciples. disciples. Yeah. He says, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, mm. for they are yours. Yeah. This uh, 9, 17, verse 9. Uh -huh. So, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Mm -hmm. I Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Mm -hmm. Keep them through your name, those whom you have given me, mm -hmm. that they may be one as we are one. Those you have given me. Who were given to God for being disciples? The twelve. Including whom? John 6, verse 7, read for us. John 6, verse 7. John 6, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve, and one of you is a devil? So, Ju Judas was elect. Is it true? Judas was elect. Is it true? Mm -hmm. Or Judas was chosen? Mm -hmm. According to the wedding, and it, 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 you know, if I not if I not what elected you, chosen. I not chose you, choose you, choose you, the twelve, and mm. one of you is a devil. So, did Jesus choose a devil for salvation? I don't know if you can answer. Did yes. Jesus choose a devil for salvation? No. Why was Judas chosen? For a special. What special way? Betrayal of Jesus. Good. So the choosing, whenever you see election, and it, mm -hmm. it's not talking about what? Salvation. This is the election we see in John 17, where Jesus is praying for the 12. How do we know that he's praying for the 12? In John 15. Mm -hmm. This one. I am the true vine, and my father is vine dresser. Mm -hmm. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Mm -hmm. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Uh, I think read verse 7. Verse 7. If you abide in me, and my will abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done. Verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go so you did not choose me. I chose you. So those twelve were chosen to go and what? So now in John seventeen, when he is now he's starting them, he says God protect them. Why? They are going to meet people and what? Mockers and scoffers. Who are going to say with ha ha ha? What are you talking about? Why? This is the concept. So whenever we are talking of election, it comes from Romans chapter. Nine. Jacob have I what? Love. And Esau have I what? Hated. What is the difference there? Are we saying Jacob was created for heaven? Mm. Are we saying Esau was created for hell? Mm. So when it comes to salvation, does God favor people? Mm. Acts 10, 34 says, I know that there is no what? Favor with God. When it comes to saving, what? Yes. So now, could he say, Esau, hell, mm -hmm. Jacob, heaven? No. Mm -hmm. In Romans 9, verse 13. Okay, let's read Romans 9, verse 11. So that when I explain about election, when we are talking about John 17, you will understand. Romans 9. Yes. Okay. Romans 9, verse 11. For the children, not yet being born, nor having done any good or evil, mm -hmm. that the purpose of God according to election might stand, mm -hmm. not of works, but of him who calls. Mm -hmm. It was said to her, the older shall save the younger. Mm -hmm. As it is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. The purpose, the elder shall save the younger. Did Jacob ever... After, did Esau ever save Jacob in their lifetime? No. Who saved the other? Jacob. Their generations. Mm -hmm. the, the, when they were alive, I got to say, save a woman with your guru. Mm -hmm. that, I'll give you cake. Don't kill me. My man, you're, you're, you're my lord. And then Esau says, I've got my only thing. Mm -hmm. The concept is made, it's Genesis 25. 
verse 24, mm -hmm. where God says, there are two, what? Nations. So now, when we are talking of election, mm -hmm. Elizabeth was elected to what? To be the what? The mother of God. Mary was elected to be what? Mother of King David. King David was elected to be what? The king. Uh, Judas was elected to be what? Uh, to betray. Betrayer. Was he elected for salvation? Mm. So whenever we see the word elect, mm -hmm. look at the context. Mm -hmm. Esau and Jacob were elect. Jacob was elected to be the father of what? Israel. So that's how I'm to, Do you know that when you look at the Bible, mm -hmm. it doesn't call Jacob a person. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. It calls him a what? A Psalm 105, verse 12. You get it, guys? so that we know who we are dealing with. And, and confirmed it to Jacob for a statue to Israel as an everlasting covenant, mm. saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan as the allotment of your inheritance when they were few in number. Do you hear that? That's what he said. He said to Jacob when he was one. Mm. When they were few. I, I don't know if you can read it in Shona. Can you get a Shona version? So that you get it. Just say, show, do you have it? In, on your, on, I've got it in my other one. Just say, show the Bible. So that you get it. In what verse are we dealing with, by the way? Uh, Psalm 105. Oh, Psalm 105. Let yes. me give you my Shona Bible. So that. I, I think the Shona makes this one. Okay, once you go to this area there. Mm. Psalm 105, you must. So when you look at Israel in the Bible, don't look at a person. Look at a nation. Some Genesis 25, verse 20. You remember when they were fighting in the womb? Mm -hmm. God said there are two people in your heart. He said there are two what? Nations. Good. From verse 10. From verse 10. Good. Yes. Continue. 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 Musa bata ba nul ba zoziwa bangu. Musa itira ba profita bangu rakaipa. Touch not my anointed. Was it one person? No. How many? Many. The whole nation Nation's. of Israel. Mm -hmm. Second John chapter two twenty says, the anointing which you have what? Received. Every child of God is anointed. anointed. Romans nine verse eleven. We saw that it says, for the purpose, he says, I have loved Esau, I have loved Jacob, Esau, I have hated him. Eh? Mm -hmm. What is hatred in the Bible? As in Luke 14, 26, eh? mm -hmm. if you want to follow me and to be my disciple, mm -hmm. and you don't want to hate your what? Your brother. Your what? Your sister. Your mother. Your wife, husband. Yourself. Do you hate each other, guys? Mm -hmm. Why? He is saying, if you prefer. don't prefer one another, mm -hmm. or if you don't prefer God over your mm -hmm. siblings or over your wife, yes. over your sisters, you cannot follow me. So he is saying, I have preferred Jacob to be the father of what? Israel. Of a nation called Israel. I, he is not saying I prefer to save Jacob and to turn Esau to hell. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it is clear. Yes. Yes. That's why you see that when you are we saying today Jesus just created Esau to go to hell? No. 
Do you remember that Esau at one point he wanted to be paid? As a matter of because of his attitude. Because I got him on the way. The flesh. So now, when we talk of foreknowledge, we are saying God knows what is going to happen in 2066. But what might happen in 2066 is not the God's made it to happen. If a thief comes here today, the 14th of January, steals this television, do we say it is God who sent the thief because God knew? No. So what are we saying? We are saying God knows exactly what Esau was going to do and what Jacob was going to be as a father of a nation. So now when we look at the verse you gave me, I go back to John 17. When you see at that verse, Jesus is not only praying for what? Uh, he's not only praying for, he's only praying for the disciples. Well, they're the only saved ones. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that I could never have 120. Mm -hmm. Do you know that if you read in Luke, it says he picked his 12 from one, 100 and what? Yes. So as he was praying for the 12, it would seem as if the 12 were the only ones who were what? Who were saved. Was it so? No. No. I am, what, I am praying for these ones because I am uh, signing them. Not because uh, they are only uh, uh, no. Why, why I don't pray for the world? Well, uh, how can you not pray for the world when you love the world? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you get the picture? Mm -hmm. What can I say? Does it make sense? No. I don't know if there is another question. I can answer all the questions. But are, are, are we on the same page, maybe? Yes. Yes. Continue. Because even if it goes even on to pray for the world. Yeah. In the spirit. Yeah, this is I pray for those who are going to believe. They are. Wait. Is that not the word? Mm -hmm. So the prayer he is touching there mm -hmm. is talking about persecution. Mm -hmm. You remember what says, As you go, don't take what. What it script or money? Mm -hmm. Go and eat what is what? What is there? One twelve, one actually. Ashitumo. In fact, we are now calling them eleven because the other one already was going. Mm -hmm. So this is the concept. So now I know the doctrine of uh, there is there, there is no such a thing as a thing called the doctrine of predestination. Mm -hmm. There is a word mm -hmm. called predestined. Uh, Romans eight verse twenty nine. Mm -hmm. We are predestined to be conformed to the image of who? There is no one who is predestined to be saved. Mm. Akuna. In Christ, that's when, once you receive Christ, Ephesians 1, verse 4. Do you know what you know? You know, contradict Revelation 13, 8. Mm. Read uh, Ephesians 1, 4. I'm sorry, I now keep on adding things. Read Ephesians 1, verse 4. This one now, this one seems to be really, 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 really supporting the cause of Calvinism. Mm. One verse four. Verse four. Mm. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation. So do you see that in this verse, the word before now is used before the what? The foundation. Why is it being used? Read. Uh, okay. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, mm. that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Whenever you see the phrase in him before, mm -hmm. in him before, he's talking about who? God. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Who existed before creation? Mm -hmm. Who? God. Were we there before creation? No. So we were chosen in him, meaning before creation, what did that so his foreknowledge is saved as good. All right, 2066, I'm going to save so and so. Mm -hmm. uh, so and so, according to our time, was not saved before creation. Mm -hmm. Was saved in 2066, according to our what? According to our frame of time, I did it. Mm -hmm. So when we see Ephesians 1, you see that it's different from Revelation 13, 18. Mm -hmm. The other one says we were saved from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. But he knows what we were in him. Before creation, I mean, who was existing before creation? Were we there before creation? We were not there. Where had we sinned? The Bible says we were darkness. 
but we have been translated to the kingdom of his dear son to light a little. So when we were in darkness, when was it? Before creation? No. We were in darkness, but at a sequel. But I'm going to pick up Tanzimu na Johnny ya tataza kune light and it. As a light in the conscience. Pa une ngo shizu kura. Une nesha ye. Do you know what it does? I'm going to chase on shit. Why? 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 There is a difference between being saved from the foundation of the world and from before the foundation. When we were in Christ, Christ to dear, and look at another verse here in Romans 13 8. You know, it says, We were our whose names are not written in the book of life. It shows, put Mazitano Yogari Malak. As those who feared God, they set off and went to another. Rashidi, mm. Rashidi, talking. And the books of remembrance were what? Written. So things are written as they, they as they go. Do you get written before you are born? No. No. But in the calendars of God, mm. into eternity, mm. as far as we are concerned, mm. we are saved on in 1984. You are saved in 2006. Mm. You are saved whatever year you are saved. Why? In Christ, maybe the devil. According to this, I see that there are so many loopholes to be filled. Mm. Jesus cannot pray for the world and at the same time and say, "I don't pray for it. I don't love it. It doesn't make sense." Another question. Great pudding. Where was that? Yeah. So we are done, brothers and sisters. And God will.